When an organization issues a value statement, it'll often list aspirations around diversity, inclusion, and equity. If you've read one of these statements, you've probably wondered about the gap between the values named and the reality of what is actually implemented. So how can our lab decide what values we stand for and how those values are reflected in our day-to-day -day relations and research? Clear has guiding values, what I would call an ethic, that helps us orient ourselves towards certain ways of research, um, certain obligations, specific priorities. For us, obligation is, is, is beautiful. It's the way we understand our connections. It's the way we understand our connections to our ancestors. It's the way we understand our connection to our elders. It's the way we understand our connection to all our relations around us all the time and, and to all the generations to come. It's really how we, we understand our place. I can't actually think of anything, literally anything in the world I'd rather be doing than facilitating a meeting about clear values. And we're here today because we're going to renew them. It's like renewing your vows, right? So all labs already and research spaces already have values. What CLEAR does, and I think this is both a method and an ethics, is that we're very deliberate and articulate about the values that the lab runs on. Um, and we're, we have different structures to be accountable for them. How to order supplies, how to hire new people, who to hire, uh, how to treat animals, whether those are the animals that become our samples or like animals that live in the lab, like spiders. Uh, how to deal with COVID and the interruption of planned research. Um, how to deal with lab members who make mistakes and cause harm. Right? All of these things where there aren't obvious and clear ways to just have a solution and off you go, we go back to the values to figure out how to maneuver that terrain. That's where our lab lives and there are very few labs that do that. Mostly because it's really hard. So I always think of the values as the heart of the lab around which we build the bones, the infrastructure, our hands, our technique, and our teeth, right? How we fight and what we fight. So what's going to happen next? So uh, we are going to tell stories. The value process begins with sharing stories that have directly come from experiences in the lab. This way, what's expressed can transcend abstract concepts and stay rooted in the lab members' shared experiences. Hi, my name is Domenica. Uh, my pro preferred pronouns are she and her, and I am from Guayaquil, Ecuador. I'll start with my story. There was one meeting that I want to talk about. One of the meetings was relating citation of politics to, to the BLM movement. And everyone, like, we all talked about, like, what, I don't remember the exact question, but like what type of connection we have to the BLM movement and how we want to create an impact. And I remember that so many of the stories, so many of the things that were taught, like that everyone was talking about were so emotional, like that when it was my turn to talk, I was like shaking. And I, and I said it out loud. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to take notes for this meeting. I like, I, I couldn't, I was like, how am I going to do this? And Alex C texted me like privately and said like, hey, um, I can take notes, notes for you. Like it's completely fine. I didn't say, oh, can somebody take notes for me or something like that? But somebody stepped up and it was like, you know what? I'm going to help you because we're lab members, like we're, we're teammates. And I, I just thought like, I don't know. It was such a huge relief. As the facilitator listens to the story, they write down different values they think are motivating, structuring, and embodied in the story. In this way, an early list of lab values is generated organically from direct experience. Thank you. So I wrote down a few things. One is valuing others. Supportive like love, I put. So a lot of the times when people say supportive, I really dislike how they use it. <clears throat> but I think you described love, right? Like people supporting you on your terms that you needed in a selfless way that recognizes that you're part of the collective taking concrete action like that's that's a lot more like love i would say than what a lot of people mean by respect and you talk and you've said stepping up right so stepping up it's a kind of way of doing your chore it's a, a love chore <laughs> like it's a way of stepping up to to further someone else's goodness did i miss anything super cool you did that alex and thank you for sharing dominica the values the facilitator writes down are not aspirational, but instead already latent in the social relations and practices of the lab. I got to the part where 
Um, it discusses how you guys don't like to use the terms community engagement. Then I realized I was wrong and I had to like, I wasn't really sure what to do about it. And it just, it felt like a real, like someone actually thought about how this situation was affecting all of us as individuals. What I put down was compassion, consideration, collectivity, and concrete action. Did those make sense? The story I would like to share with you is deeply personal and it's difficult for me to talk about. I was like, I know, but like, I just, I don't know what I'm going to say and do. And she was like, seriously, don't stress. The message that I took uh, from what I saw written there was, don't do science with a broken heart. Generosity, respect, humility. Calling me to account has created a, a very sad moment for me as I, the crushing realization of my creativity has been sapped by academia. So I put calling to account, we call that calling in. After the list of values is generated from all the stories, members of the group select a few values that stood out to them during storytelling. Next, each person in the group draws lines to connect those core values to other values in the list they relate to. This way we can see all the connections, repetitions, and density of links between the values. Eventually, key nodes begin to emerge that suggest the shared core values of the group. So you can sort of just eyeball this and just like try and see what you can see. Right, because we're going to start analyzing these sort of relationships. Through a process of counting all the links and creating a word cloud to then represent the count visually, we're able to rank the values. So basically, I've got the key nodes up at the top. Humility, accountability, and openness to others are red because they're the top ones. And then there's a gap, and we've got our self-awareness, collectivity, consideration, inviting, and welcoming. There's so much overlap which is actually really, really good when you're trying to figure out your orienting values, right? Because different values are reinforcing each other and having ripple effects, and that's how they should be. You don't want them siloed. So like, now you are doing humility, and now we are doing equity. Once the values are ranked, we move on to the next step of explaining the values to one another in the context of our shared work, addressing any lingering questions or open-ended meanings. When we are defining openness to others as a value, does that value have, like, does describing who we are open to, does it already tell us who we are not open to? We do a ton of exclusion. This is not a radically inclusive lab. There are no neo-Nazis allowed. There are no people who, who in an interview will say, I want to join the lab because it is primarily good for me. Right, which is a self-maximizing sort of stance. I really want to make sure these things in the blue box are there, that, that, that there's two sides to this coin of openness, and one of those sides is refusal and closure. Next, we attempt to explain the key values in paragraph form. This process of explaining helps the values become re-embedded in context and adds nuance and other meanings that have emerged during the discussions. One of the premises of the exercise that is Try to explain this to your mother, to your father, <laughs> stuff like that. So for me, it was a lot of uh, evaluation in how to, how would I tell this to my roommate? How would I tell this to my mom? So I really try to uh, break everything down and find the connections uh, that make sense in my head. The process of translating the values into prose form can lead to further discussions and debate as we hone in on specific examples and metaphors that embody the values in action. Um, also, I highlight a uh, soft front, strong back. I was wondering if I could get like more of a definition of it. You can sort of think of like welcoming front, hardcore um, spine or something like that. If the metaphor doesn't like clarify things, then like it's not doing its job because that is the only point of metaphors in this work. I love the soft front, strong back metaphor. Um, I love that language. I'm going to disagree slightly though i don't like the soft front strong back metaphor um because i i get it i just i just don't like the use of the word soft and i i just feel like soft and strong have a, a different valences for me mm. um, and they're not opposites maybe yeah they're not they're, and and in fact i would say it's it takes strength to be welcoming and to do the the quote-unquote soft parts the gushy parts takes strength Disagreements are natural and make this process stronger, as the lab collectively works out nuances of what they mean and the politics of certain words. In the end, everyone should agree on how the values are described.
I wanted to 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 probably point out is uh, my my agreeing with what Noah said on the metaphor um, of soft front, strong back. Maybe we can find something around that because I I, I agree with what you said, Noah. To me, uh, vulnerability requires a lot of strength. Another potential metaphor, which I've actually talked to Abu about, I think, is is this idea that you you hold at one hand, but you keep the other hand closed and close to your heart, and you. You need to do both. I do like the metaphor. And when you did the thing with your hand, I was like, oh. So what I'll do is I'll craft this intro based on the input I'm about to get. We'll do the long other stuff later and as a lab over many years, the same way we've done it this time. Value statements are not set in stone. They are meant to be living documents, frequently revisited so that they stay responsive and relevant to the collective. When I've done crafting this sort of entrance elevator pitch thing, we'll do a lab wipe consensus on it. Um, I am not expecting too many edits given the ridiculously long process we've done. Um, long, careful, slow, thoughtful, nuanced consensus process we've done. I look after the lab, which is a little community, and then people look after their projects. One of the big problems we face is that people don't spend all their time in that little world. And they go out and do their other classes and get professionalized and go to workshops. And those and the values espoused in like good science communication and good hard working, whatever, are not the values of the lab. And so they're constantly coming back in accidentally, right? So people being like, ooh, uh, I need to get everything done by this time or else. I'm like, no, the number one rule of the lab is that if you're tired, exhausted, heartbroken, et cetera, you go home. How does that mean you have to work until midnight? No, like where did you guys know that? Where did that come from? But it's reinforced constantly in their classes and their professionalization. And so, you know, it's a very permeable world. I think we've really fostered an environment where we understand our places and where we are and what sort of our background is and what we can actually do, what we're qualified to and not. But um, when it comes to working together, we're really able to just see each other at eye level. The most important thing is that she is taking the most essential, the most central values and knowledge of us as Indigenous people, and she's applying that into the work she's doing in the lab on a, on a very day-to-day -day basis, not a theoretical basis. Yeah.